There are times when I'm working on a math problem, for example, and I will get stuck. So I will go play the piano for a little bit, have the problem work out in the back of my head as I'm thinking about other stuff. And all of a sudden, I'll come to a realization. I'll realize like, oh, you know, that's a potential way that I could solve this problem. My name is Chris Ying. I am a history and math double major. I'm graduating from Cal this year, and I've been named as the university medalist for 2024. When I applied to colleges, you know, I visited Berkeley's campus, and there was just this sort of indescribable energy that you felt on campus that I didn't feel on other college campuses. It was a very easy decision to choose Berkeley. It is the number one school for the two majors that I've chosen. It is the number one public school in the entire world. For history, you know, you're creating an argument about the past. You're reading a bunch of material, you're condensing it down, and can you make an argument about why what happened, you know, happened the way that it did? To here. For math, it's very much so you are still making an argument. The problem is how do you prove that there are no extra relations? As you get to higher levels of pure mathematics, it's all about can you make a logical argument? Um, can you make an airtight logic chain? Um, for me, both subjects deal a lot with logical reasoning, deal with organization, and deal with critical thinking. Both of them are, I think, great preparations for the next chapter of what I want to go towards, which is law school. Guilt by association is not guilt under the law. With Mock Trial, it was the first club that I joined when I came onto campus. And for Mock Trial, the lesson that I learned was, you know, the importance of being yourself. At the end of the day, Mock Trial is, you know, a very theatrical activity. The prosecution has pointed to these fingerprints and said, look, we told you. It's about public speaking and debate, but at the same time, you want to be entertaining with how you present yourself. To that end, the best way that you can be entertaining, the way that you can stand out, is if you be yourself. When I joined the student newspaper, it was you know, something that I wanted to improve my writing for. As a student journalist, you're covering some of the biggest issues in our city and on our campus. You're able to use this big platform that you have to give people who otherwise wouldn't have a voice a way to speak up for themselves. So one of my friends at the Daily Cal told me that there was an opportunity to join a class teaching incarcerated uh, journalists how to edit their newspapers. I remember the first time that I went into the prison, it was kind of a scary experience. You know, there are no guards escorting you, there's no physical barrier between you and the incarcerated people. You're very much aware that you are in prison. But then you start seeing, you know, everyone in prison being so happy that you're here, there, being so genuinely, you know, excited that they, you're there to help them. After I did the first time in San Quentin, I wanted to go back and do it again. My senior history thesis was originally going to be talking about how political movements like Black Lives Matter have impacted California's prison system. I eventually got permission to actually interview a lot of the incarcerated students and journalists that I work with. And through that experience, I realized that the missing component of the existing literature was that the existing literature sort of focuses on the outside-in perspective versus the stories that these incarcerated people were telling me was that often they were the ones who were starting these different movements. So I was very happy to be able to write my history thesis and tell these stories, many of these stories for the first time. You know, law was something that I was always interested in, but it wasn't until, you know, the push that Daily Cal gave me to see this kind of social change aspect that I, uh, you know, went to San Quentin and saw just what the legal career could have an impact on that I decided, you know, this went from something being an interest of mine to law being something that I absolutely needed to do. For me, piano becomes a exercise in self-expression. My mom had always wanted to play the piano when she was young, but she never got the opportunity to. When she came to the United States, that opportunity became available to her, but she gave it to me. I think one of my greatest accomplishments in college was not actually done at Berkeley, it was done at home because I was able to teach my mom how to play piano. I'm really glad to have been able to give her that gift. I think I will take a spirit of um, having found more of myself at Berkeley through mock trial and the other extracurriculars that I did, a sense of purpose after you know having gone through San Quentin and seeing how impactful a career in law can be. I will also take a lot of friendships with me along the way too. 
um, during the four and a half years that I was here. I was able to meet a lot of really interesting people and I'm happy to say that a lot of them will be my lifelong friends.